a new Apex Legends stories from the Outlands dropped, and this time the tale revolves around Bangalore. Bangalore's backstory has always been told in bits and pieces, but the cinematic shows a fuller picture of what Bangalore went through. Here's a breakdown on Bangalore's lore so far. In this cinematic piece, we witnessed the Battle of Gridiron. According to Bangalore, this was the final battle in the Frontier War, which was the main conflict in Titanfall 2. This means that Bangalore was fighting closely after the events of Titanfall 2. So to put this into perspective, Titanfall 2's last events took place about 30 years before the Apex game started. In this cinematic, it's revealed that Bangalore was serving on the side of the IMC. Bangalore's age says she's 38, so maybe she was around 18 or 20 when she enlisted in the IMC after her brother Jackson. For a quick recap, the IMC is the Interstellar Manufacturing Corporation that started the Frontier Wars when the corporation started mining planets and uprooting residents from their homes just to gain natural resources. The militia was formed by the citizens of the affected planets on the frontier to fight back against the IMC to reclaim their homes. The Battle of Gridiron saw the defeat of the IMC and the militia's victory. In the cinematic, Jackson issued a retreat order on their ship, the Hestia, that wasn't authorized by their commander. They were able to warp travel to another planet, but crashed on planet Gaia. If that planet sounds familiar, Familiar, that's probably because Apex's latest map, Stormpoint, is a location on Gaia. If you look in the background of the cinematic and compare it to the POI ship fall on Stormpoint, the Hestia, Bangalore, and Jackson crash is that exact ship that lives on the map now. Bangalore was actually not aware that Jackson himself had made the call to retreat and was thoroughly disappointed in him. The cinematic reveals that Bangalore's family, the Williams, had been serving the IMC for generations, so the pride and sense of duty for Bangalore was extremely strong. However, the Battle of Gridiron ended in the IMC's defeat, so Jackson wanted to start a new life on Stormpoint and get away from it all. Bangalore calls for their retrieval from their commander, Scryer. The IMC wasn't exactly known for forgiveness, and Scryer was going to kill Jackson for being a deserter. A fight ensues between Scryer and Bangalore and Jackson, with Scryer destroying the village and hurting innocent people. During this fight, we see Scryer fly using his jump kit thrusters, which has never been seen before with any pilot in the Titanfall universe. There are a few theories around that, but we'll come back to this later. Scryer is a cloak pilot, and he reminds us just how terrifying pilots actually are to fight against. Bangalore and Jackson are technically grunts for the IMC, the standard ground soldiers who support the pilots. Pilots are basically super soldiers in the Titanfall universe with extra abilities and extensive training. So it takes Bangalore and Jackson to take him down, and we see her kill Scryer with his own knife. The same knife that we see her use as her heirloom in Apex now. After killing Scryer, Bangalore and Jackson are seen taking the ship their commander came in on to leave Stormpoint with her surviving squadron. However, we know that on a ship in transport, Bangalore lost Jackson and he's presumed dead by most, but she believes he may still be alive. This could be the ship that Bangalore lost Jackson on while on their way out of Stormpoint. There are several clues that point to this. In the loading screen Escape to Paradise, the text says some locations such as Tribulation Isle, Hana Beach, and Stormpoint are off-limits to the public. Please be advised that warp travel is not responsible for any damages or injuries sustained outside designated safe zones. This warning insinuates that warp travel on these points of the planet are dangerous, and when Bangalore and Jackson try to travel out, they may have run into trouble then. In the transcripts posted on the official Apex site, we see that Jackson fell from the moving ship while investigating an airlock. In that photo provided in the news article, Bangalore is wearing the same exact outfit seen in the cinematic. So it's entirely possible the events in the story happened just before Jackson was lost, which means that Jackson could have survived on Gaia or died and Bangalore hasn't been able to find him. Or maybe he was dropped during warp travel and she has no idea where he could be. We just know that warp travel is not safe and reliable coming out of Stormpoint, so he was lost somewhere along the way. In another loading screen, subject to random thoughts, a discarded letter from Bangalore to Loba shows Bangalore reflecting on the battle she fought there and says that maybe she wants to go home, but at this point, Jackie might be blank and the message cuts off. In the loading screen recovered message, there's mention of leaders planning an expansion and that a team is going to recover parts from the IMS Hestia, the ship that Bangalore and Jackie crashed onto Stormpoint to refurbish. We're not sure what exactly is going to happen or what is happening, but we know that in this current season story, Ash wants some old IMC files for some reason, and the IMS Hestia might house some of the data she's looking for. So we'll just have to wait and see what pans out from Bangalore's background and the current ongoing story. But I, I want to circle back to the flying pilot. We have never seen a a pilot fly before in the Titanfall universe, in any Titanfall games or even in Apex. Valkyrie doesn't count since her jump kit has been modified using her father's North Star Titan's flight kit. That is not a normal pilot kit. 
There was an ability to hover and suspend yourself mid-air in Titanfall 2, but that isn't quite what Commander Scryer did. This next part is a bit of a stretch theory, but there are a few points of evidence that point towards an alternate timeline theory. In Wraith cinematic, the Voidwalker Wraith, who saved the Apex Wraith, is not from the current Apex timeline. The Voidwalker cinematic showed us that multiple timelines of the universe exist, which is how Voidwalker Wraith was able to find our Wraith and rescue her. So with this in mind, if Apex was actually set in an alternate timeline, this would explain a few discrepancies with the Titanfall story and the Apex story now. One of the biggest differences seen is in Season Legacy's introduction art of Valkyrie finding her father's helmet, but in the background you can see parts of Viper's North Star Titan and also BT's chassis. This physically cannot be possible since BT threw himself into the destruction of the fold weapon in the ending of Titanfall 2. While Viper's Titan may have survived on chunks of the destroyed planet, BT would have been obliterated in the heart of that explosion. Another point to this theory is that during the Halloween events, we've been taken to an alternate timeline where Revenant has actually taken over and now hosts the Apex Games for his amusement. So alternate timelines do exist in this universe and are acknowledged. This could also explain the brand new Titan ability that Scryer showcased along with the different models of guns that are from the Titanfall era, but slightly altered. Of course, the guns could have just been improved or modified since then, but the world discrepancies still stand. But again, that's just a fan theory on alternate timelines. We now know more about Bangalore and her past, and I look forward to seeing more develop on her finding Jackson, or at least getting a conclusion on where he is or if he's alive. For more Apex lore, check out my last piece I made on Ash's backstory and current story, and for more Apex news, keep it here at IGN. Gridiron was a massacre, but we're alive, sis. That's what matters. They called a retreat, but just a few of us got back to the Hestia. We made it uncharted jump, and here we are. Edge of the galaxy. The outlay.